also C'est La Vie by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. This is from their album The Works, Volume 1, released in 1977. And it was kind of an interesting album where each guy in the band took a side of the record. It was a double LP, right? And then the fourth side, they, they did it as a band. So it gave everybody a chance to shine. And after I did my lesson on From the Beginning and um, Still You Turn Me On, um, and I'll put links to those in the description box below. And up, if you click that eye up there in the corner, <laughs> um, you take to my website and you can, you can look up those lessons there. But um, I had a lot of requests to do this one, okay? So here it is. The whole thing is arpeggios. The verse and the chorus are, you know, uh, once you learn the chords, it's not too bad. But the instrumental break is really, really hard. Okay, so just forewarning you. Um, and as he got older, you know, Greg Lake, when he was playing solo, he didn't even do the instrumental section. Um, I think probably a lot of that was because Keith Emerson obviously wasn't around, but it's just really, really hard to play. Anyways, let's get going on it. So we're in the key of D minor here, and we're, we're in drop D tuning. Okay, so you want to take your E string, tune it to your D string, right? And the first chord is, it's like an A minor shape, but we're going to just do it up on the seventh fret. So we've got B, uh, six and D7 and G7, just the A minor shape. And it gives you this D minor chord, but we've got that high E there, so we've got to call this chord a D minor add nine. And the picking is just, right? It's really simple. It's four down and four up. So four down strokes and then four up strokes. And for a song like this, I use this heavy pick. I um, don't know if you can see it there. I also have that on my website if you want to check out my gear page. But this has got the real sharp point, right? And um, I find these just excellent for, uh, you know, arpeggiating stuff like this. And also for playing like leads where there's a lot of picking. And the trick is to be consistent or try to be as consistent as you can on every note. Okay, now the next chord is going to be a C, but we're going to put our little finger there on B3 to get the D note, so it's going to be a C add 9. And the transition to that chord is really important. We want to hit that open G to give us time to get our hand down to the C. Okay, so in real time... Okay, slowly. Once we got an upstroke on the G, then we're gonna same thing, four down and four back. Now the first time he kind of stops the second cycle, so he goes right. He doesn't do that last note. Now next chord is gonna be this chord here, and this is. A B flat six with a sharp eleven. Okay. <laughs> um, so we've got first fret A, third fret D, open G, third fret B string, which is a D note, and then we've got that open E, which is a sharp eleven, right? So we've got root fifth sixth major third sharp eleven. Okay. And we do the exact same picking, so. Right? And I paused there because I wanted to make sure that I tell you, dude, you gotta leave that G ringing while we make that change, right? So. kill that G string and then okay one two three four one two three now the fourth one you're gonna take your finger off take your third finger off and hit the open D it's another transition because um, if we didn't if we just went you know we gotta do that clumsy change 
but if we hit the open D, as we go back to the C add nine, it's smooth, right? And then, okay, and that's the end of the first cycle. And then he goes, right? So that's harmonic um, 12A, 12G, and we repeat. We'll do it real slow. Notice that second time through on the C. We, we just go all the way through the arpeggio, right? Because the first time we go, right? But the second time, open D string. Now we head to this next chord, which is going to be. This chord here, and this is a G minor six. Okay, we've got a root G and our fifth, and the open G. So that's a ten, D twelve, open G, and we've got B eleven, which is our minor third, and the open E string, which is the sixth. Right, so G minor six. That third is the minor third, and we do the exact same arpeggio. Now, in my demo, I just stayed on that chord the whole time, but if you watch him play live, and I kind of noticed this uh, after I'd done my demo, <laughs> um, he's kind of, he's adding that note there, um, B13, the second time through, okay? Not all the time, but sometimes. So you can, you know, as an embellishment, right? That's really hard to get my little finger in there. I find that hard. Okay, and then we're back to that. But the transition between to go to there, right? We've got to again hit that open G, right? And then we're on the G on A10. So we've got to think this. And if you can get that first one and then lay the other two down after, it makes it a lot easier, right? And if you don't hit that open G, you know, it's just dead. You're going to kill it, right? So hitting that open G will really um, make that transition smooth. And we do it twice, right? So. Now we're going to go to this chord, which is an E minor 7 flat 5, and um, that's going to be A7, D8, G7, and B8. So we've got our root note, our flat 5, our minor 7th, and our minor 3rd. And of course the open E is just doubling the root. And we do the same arpeggio. Now we're just going to lift our little finger up one fret in the B string, and that's going to give us an E7 flat 5. Now we're going to go, and that is D7 and G9, and bar with your little finger on the tenth of B and E. And what you're getting there is you're getting an A sus4. And then the next chord is this. And this is how Greg Lake plays it, right? So it's like you've got that, but you're doing it with these fingers and you're getting that root down there on D7, right? Now, I find that really a hard chord to get. So I cheated and I went like this. Just 
played the D shape A there and I just went so G string B string G string E string to end it right okay so from that E minor 7 flat 5 They go through into the second verse, right? Um, and which is exactly the same as the first verse. And then after the second time of that, right, we're gonna we're gonna end it on that G string, right? And that brings us to the next section, which is the instrumental section where Keith Emerson plays his uh, accordion solo. And this is really tough, okay? I, I really struggled with this part. It's really hard. Um, I'll just play it for you. We've got a D minor shape here. And what we've got is... a descending bass right and we've got this so our arpeggio now changes to triplets so instead of going one two and three and four and we've got one two three one two three okay so and that's your first figure so we've got a hammer on e2 now this is the tough part we've got to get that little finger on a4 and what you'll struggle with, well, I don't know what you'll struggle with, but what I struggled with was keeping that finger there and making that, that you know, not getting it muffled out, right? Exact same. Drop it down one more. And to finish off, we're just going to put our middle finger on A2. And just the middle four strings. chord which is A1 and B3 which is a B flat 6 with a flat 5 the open E being the flat 5 and we're 3 down from the A string and then 3 up from the E string and then A7 exact same picking and then we finish it off by going So what we're doing there is we're now going to do five notes on this arpeggio, right? So instead of six, it's five. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. So what I'm doing there is I'm fretting uh, G7 and B6. I'm actually not even playing um, the G7, but I, I'm fretting it anyways because I don't want to accidentally hit the open G string. So we've got one, two, three, the first three strings, E, A, and D, and then high E and B string. Right, now we're gonna come up here to the 10th fret and bar the G, B, and E strings. Now if you'll watch the live videos, Greg Lake, I think he's doing it with his first finger. But I found it easier with my third finger. And we're just gonna go like this. One, two, three, four, five. Right, five notes to match that. So it's E string, B string, G string, B string, D string. Okay, so let's play that whole thing slowly. the whole thing repeats and the last time you hit this now we're going to transition back into this that's 
same chord that we know from earlier, mm -hmm. right? But we're triplets, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. So down three, up three from the E string. And now to our opening chord. that open G to transition back to that, right? And now this, E minor 7 flat 5. Sus4, and that's how he plays that chord um, in the live videos. Okay, but I really struggle with that, so again, I cheated there. Okay, so it's not exactly what he's doing, but for me, that was close enough. And then we're back into the eighth note of arpeggios, right, to finish the song. And then to end it, you know, it's just... kind of went way back near the bridge to get that real brassy sound. And that's it for this one. Um, like I said, the verse and the chorus aren't too bad. You know, with a little practice, you can get it. Uh, the instrumental section is tough. And as he got older, you know, um, watching live videos of him play it, he never even did that section. He just skipped that entirely, right? And if he did, he had kind of... something like that. I mean, I'm not sure that's what he was doing, but he was simplifying it because that is really demanding. That's probably too fast, but um, that'll be the trick is uh, to get that part smooth. Anyways, that's it for this one. Uh, I hope you get something out of it. I hope you enjoy playing it. It's a beautiful song. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you next time.